Welcome to the latest episode of Beatin' and Bangin'. I'm your host, Kyle Dalton. In today's video, we've got some news from the weekend's race at Bristol as we take a look at Denny Hamlin's win and more specifically, his post-race comments to the fans and how he's embraced his villainous role. Plus, we have news about the world's fastest half mile and the 2024 schedule, as well as another announcement on tracks for 2024. And finally, we have some sad news to share from NASCAR that, as you followed on my journey, it's painfully close to home. Also, I have a programming update for this weekend's races at Texas. Let's start with the news on the 2024 schedule. I wrote about this a few weeks ago, but failed to mention it in a video. But the Chicago Street Race is back. The race's official Twitter page announced it on September 5th, that it was inviting fans to sign up for the waitlist to be the first to know when tickets became available. I was there back in July and think this is a good move to race through the streets of the Windy City. Hopefully, the weather will cooperate this second time around. While there hasn't been any more news on next year's schedule since the Chicago tweet, that changed over the last few days when NASCAR made an announcement on a couple of short tracks returning to the 2024 schedule. Yesterday, NASCAR announced that the Clash of the Coliseum will be returning to LA. I think that's a good move, A, because it's an exhibition, and B, with Fontana off the schedule for the foreseeable future, there needs to be a race in Southern California. This covers that, and I found that race over the last couple of years to be very entertaining. The other short track schedule change announced over the weekend at Bristol is Bristol. It's getting rid of the dirt. I know this has been a controversial subject since SMI announced the dirt race several years ago, but I think this is the wrong move. Here's why. I think we need a dirt race on the schedule. So if we're taking the dirt off at Bristol, I'm hoping that the new schedule, which many think will be released in the next week or two, will include a dirt race at hopefully a purpose-built dirt track. I know many fans were opposed to Thunder Valley being covered in dirt, but I applauded SMI for at least trying it and thinking outside of the box. I personally think it produced an entertaining racing product that, most importantly, brought in new eyeballs. That's the way you grow the sport, is by bringing in new fans. I think the Bristol dirt, just like the Clash in Chicago, is an opportunity for new race fans to get excited about seeing the Cup Series drivers tested in a completely different environment than they're accustomed to. And that's good for the overall racing product. We'll see if NASCAR delivers with a dirt race somewhere else on the schedule. Moving on, let's go back to Saturday night's race on the concrete. Denny Hamlin was one of the three Joe Gibbs racing cars to lead a lot of laps. Christopher Bell led the most at 187 laps. Ty Gibbs ran out front for 102, and the number 11 led for 142, including the most important lap. After the race, Hamlin was interviewed by NBC's Marty Snyder. Before and during the interview, the Bristol fans showered the driver with boos. Snyder even asked Hamlin specifically about it. Take a listen. So are these fans motivation for you? There's a lot of booze out there. Hey. Hey. I beat your favorite driver. And who would that be? All of them. <laughs> Denny Hamlin. I'm pretty confident everyone assumed Hamlin was going to say Chase Elliott. But he did it one better, including all of his competition, which was actually true. It was one of his better responses and showed how he's really embraced and is leaning into his villain role. And I, for one, love it. NASCAR needs villains. And I think what makes this all the more interesting is Hamlin's rise as probably the main villain in the Cup Series comes at the same time his former JGR teammate Kyle Busch has faded into the shadows. Busch just doesn't hear it from the fans like he used to since he's moved to Richard Childress Racing. In fact, there's a discernible difference at each race I've been to this season, where there are definitely more cheers than boos. Hamlin's rise and Bush's decline in the villainous category 
is an interesting scenario that I don't think anyone would have envisioned just a couple of years ago. Makes me wonder who might be the next villain waiting in the wings. And to our last news item, it's a sad one that has unfortunately taken an ugly turn. Most NASCAR fans know the name Sherry Pollux. She was Martin Truex Jr.'s longtime girlfriend who courageously battled cancer for years. The two partnered up to tackle this terrible disease through the Martin Truex Jr. Foundation, whose mission is to raise awareness, boost advocacy, and raise funds for underfunded childhood and ovarian cancer initiatives. Unfortunately, the 44-year-old lost her fight over the weekend. Truex put out a statement talking about Sherry's passion for making a difference in the lives of others. She did in a massive way. Reading the news this weekend obviously hit close to home as my family deals with my mom's own personal fight with cancer. In our case, there will be no cure and we accept that. But for so many others who are battling this terrible disease, there is hope. Research and treatments have dramatically improved over the last several decades, and people like Sherry and Martin have made a huge difference in the fight. Thanks to both of them, and rest in peace, Sherry. Job well done. Oh yeah, an F cancer. That should be the end of the story, and that's why I initially planned on ending my story on the subject. But then, Danica Patrick jumped into the mix. The former NASCAR driver who last raced in the 2018 Daytona 500 and has only maintained her presence in the sport by serving as a guest analyst for several races during Fox's broadcast portion of the schedule the last two seasons, responded to Truex's statement on Instagram in an unexpected way, calling the Joe Gibbs Racing driver's remarks cold and insensitive. I avoid negativity on social at almost all cost, almost but this is the most insensitive, disconnected statement from a guy that I have never liked, and obviously for good reason. I don't care what happened between them, but this is as cold as it gets. A PR rep wrote this guaranteed. You're free from this now, Sherry. Absolutely shocking. There's no other way to describe her remarks. Patrick would have done herself a huge favor if she ended with her first sentence about avoiding negativity at all cost but she didn't, and then proceeded to slam Truex, including admitting that she never liked the guy. She should have started with that because everything else after was just a hit job, including questioning the tone of his statement, suggesting it was written by a PR rep, I'm pretty sure most of them would be, and then saying how Sherry is free from this. I get it. Maybe Patrick has information that we aren't privy to. Okay, that's fine. But if that's the case, then take it up behind closed doors and address it with him or his PR person, but at least show some common decency and respect and give it some time, maybe a week or two, any time but within hours of Pollux's death. I wish I didn't even have to address this, but it's news, and as I mentioned, I'm a little sensitive to people and their loved ones dealing with cancer. And finally, a bit of programming news. This week, I'll be up at Texas Motor Speedway for the Xfinity and Cup Series races. I'll be interviewing drivers and watching the races. And the plan is to put out as many shorts as possible on the channel. I know I've done it a few times in the past, but this will include driver interviews and any other things that I find interesting and want to share with you. Just wanted to give everyone a heads up so you'll be on the lookout for what I'm hoping to be some interesting content this weekend. As for the rest of the video, I'm curious to hear what you think about the 2024 schedule. Are you happy to have the Clash, two Bristol concrete races, and Chicago back? And what do you think about Denny Hamlin playing the role as villain? Do you think he's a good villain? Do you miss Kyle Busch in that same role? Thanks as always for checking out the latest video and hope you have a great rest of your day.